Thank you for taking time out with PSOA. Sean Johnston here from Omaha, Nebraska. This week's training tape is going to focus on the big fouls. Intentional fouls, technical, and flagrant fouls. For many reasons, the month of February brings out more of these situations. And the sole goal of this training tape is to actually prevent these situations from happening and if they do happen to de-escalate these situations from going further. With no further ado, we're going to start with some big foul philosophies. Number one, when in doubt, it is not a technical foul. We have the tool of bench decorum warning that we could use in basketball. So if a coach, if a bench personnel, if a head coach is right on that line, should I, should I not give a technical foul? Don't. Use the bench decorum warning. Intentional foul. When in doubt, it's not intentional. If you don't have a negative reaction, you could use this as an educational point. Call the personal foul and let the player know In a different situation, different reaction, we could have went an intentional foul. So try to prevent that player from making that choice in that manner in the future. And then with the flagrant foul, this is an ejection. So when in doubt, was it flagrant? Was it not flagrant? It was not flagrant. We have to be 100% sure if we have a flagrant foul. And officials reminder, when you do have flagrant fouls, NEIA, NCAA, JUCO, Federation, you have to properly report it. You have to go online, fill out that ejection report, and be factual. This is the behavior the player did. This is the rule which it's connected to. After the incident, no further problems. Uh, But... Reporting flagrant fouls and ejections, very important. It is a written document that we should take so professionally that it is a written document that's going to be used in in the court of law. Second philosophy, thick skin. We hear it all the time. To be an official, you need thick skin. You got to be able to take abuse. Wrong. Officials, having thick skin is not allowing continuous, repetitive, unsporting behavior. It's actually, we nip it in the butt right away. But we nip it with thick skin. Calming, diffusing, listening, understanding. If we react in an escalation to a tough situation, that's not thick skin. We're adding to the problem. All right, so when we have unsporting behavior, have thick skin when enforcing or handling it. You got to stay calm. Don't take it personal. Third philosophy, do not be in a hurry. You yourself slow down. Communicate with the crew. Crew communicate with coaches and players and scores table. By us slowing down, we have escalation of not only the player's behavior, the coach's behavior, our behavior, but the fans as well. Time will help settle people down. Let people breathe. Take air out of the situation. And then the last philosophy, we as officials have to understand this is a very impactful call. Sometimes on the cognitive development of the person, Is it going to make them a better coach and player in future situations? Is it going to make the game worse? Right, the game impact. You know, two free throws in the ball. Was that behavior worth two free throws in the ball? Don't give these calls to quote unquote teach a lesson. We have to understand the impact. There's other ways to influence behavior change other than laying down the hammer because if you're one of those officials that always uses the hammer 
Imagine you're a carpenter, always using a hammer. Eventually, you, the person using the hammer, you're going to hit yourself, and it's going to hurt you and your reputation. So really, the technical file, intentional file, flagrant file, it is the last resort. Use other tools that we have taught on previous training tapes to communicate clearly, to listen, to talk f firm but fair so these situations don't happen. All right, just like previous videos, we're going to go over the rule. We're going to go over some examples and intent, and then we're going to finish up with video. All right, so rule for intentional foul. Just like we've done in previous training tapes, we're going to start with the rule, intent of the rule, how do we apply the rule, and then we're going to get into videos. So the first one, 4193, intentional foul. Personal or technical foul that may or may not be premeditated and is not based on the severity of the act. Penalty. Two free throws to the offended player and the ball awarded to the offended team at the spot nearest the intentional foul. So with an intentional foul, they go up for a basket and the defender just shoves the player to the ground, but the basket goes in. It That is not an and one. That is an intentional foul and the penalty is two free throws and the ball spot at the nearest of that intentional foul. So since that's going to be the offense front court, it's going to be one of the four designated spots. So at the end of that action, two points for the layup. Make two free throws, two more points. Inbound three-point shot, that's a seven-point swing. All right, so that's why in that type of situation, make sure it's clearly an intentional, fa uh, intentional foul um, that may or may not be premeditated. Here are Here's a chart. There is five categories of intentional fouls. Here's a chart. There's five categories of intentional fouls. Category number one, contact that neutralizes an opponent's obvious advantageous position. The most common example is the clear path layup. There's no defender in front of them. The defender behind reaches out and pulls the jersey. The penalty for that is an intentional foul, two free throws for that player who was going to have that wide open layup. And now we got to determine which spot is the nearest of the intentional foul. In the back court, we go back to the back court. In the front court, it's going to be one of the four designated spots, 28 foot line or three feet outside the end line, baseline. Category two, contact away from the ball with an opponent who is clearly not involved with the play. Example, at the end of the game, they're strategically fouling. I myself am a good free throw shooter. My teammate, Jeffrey, he's a bad free throw shooter. So I have the ball. They don't want to foul me because I'm not going to shoot the free throws. Jeff away from the ball is the one being fouled. That's an intentional foul. So Jeff will shoot the two free throws. Our team will get the ball at the spot nearest where they fouled Jeff. Category three, contact that is not a legitimate attempt to play the ball or player specifically designed to stop the clock or keep from starting. Example that is an intentional foul. Holding an opponent before the ball is legally touched. So we have an inbound with 7.1 seconds left and right as we administer the ball to the thrower, the defense fouls right away. That's an intentional foul preventing the clock from scoring. Now, the other example of where it is, same thing, 7.1, now we throw it in. And we have that two hand, it's not only a push, but we push that opponent to the ground. That is not a legitimate play on the baller player. Now, if we just do a two hand push, displace them, yes, we are doing it on purpose, but the purpose is the clock started, we allow them to shoot two free throws, our team gets the ball back. But to the ground? No, we cannot allow that as officials. Fourth category, excessive contact with an opponent while the ball is live or until an airborne shooter returns to the floor. Example, 
Defender not attempting to block a shot, just taking out the shoulder's body. All right, so we'll have some examples of, of this, this one here in the video. But there is such a thing as a hard foul. Coaches will say, well, they have a, a good chance of getting a layup. Let's make them earn the two points. So I'm going to go block that sharp shot, and when I go block that shot, it is a hard foul. But that block shot is an attempt on the ball. Now, if they hit below the armpits, go nowhere near the ball, that's the excessive contact. So it's a hard foul, but they didn't go for the ball at all. So that's going to be an intentional foul. Now, weird play, but as that airborne shooter is fouled, and then that airborne shooter just pushes off, that's what we're talking about, the exception. Any common foul after the first personal foul called, the first intentional foul called, is ignored. It's incidental contact. Only fouls after the first foul call that is equal or above will be enforced, and we will show an example of this as well. The last category is on an inbound. Defender contacts a thrower, not the ball, the thrower. Defender reaches across the boundary line and contacts the thrower during an inbounds play. All right, that is an intentional foul, preventing the clock from starting. Um, if you have a lot of awareness and the game and the intent was not to foul, it was an accidental contact of the thrower, the actual violation happened first. They crossed that boundary line before contacting the thrower. Make this intentional foul and throw in. The player was reaching and contacted the thrower on purpose, not accidentally while going over that boundary line. If it's an accident, a true accident, lean towards violation, warn the team, remind them not to cross the boundary line. Next big foul is technical foul. A technical foul, a foul by a non-player, so this is a bench. A non-contact foul by a player, so we have 10 players on the court and they're doing behavior on the court that doesn't involve contact. An intentional or flagrant contact foul while the ball is dead, except a common foul by an airborne shooter. Again, if it's a common foul by an airborne shooter after a foul, it's ignored, it's incidental. But now, if the airborne shooter is fouled and then that airborne shooter does a technical foul, now you, you would enforce the personal common foul for the shooter and then the technical foul on that airborne shooter. But if it's just two common fouls, it's incidental. You ignore that second one. A direct technical foul to a head coach because of the head coach's actions. And then the fifth one, an indirect technical charge to the head coach, but it's because of somebody else on the bench's actions. Penalty is different. Two free throws to the offended team. What that means now is the offended team gets to sh pick any shooter, the five players on the court, any legal substitute, to shoot one or both of those free throws. And then after those free throws, now the ball is awarded at the division line. I was at a, a youth game this past weekend. Official correctly called an intentional foul underneath the basket, but then the official put the ball out of bounds at the division line. That is improper. It's only a technical foul that is at the division line. Right? And that makes a big difference. Division line is a lot farther away from the basket. Right? So we got to make sure we administer it correctly. Again, technical, two free throws. Anybody on the team that um, is the offended technical foul team, they get to pick one shooter, sub, or on the, or on the court. Or you could have two shooters, one for the first free throw, one for the second free throw. Those players, if they come off the bench, must remain in the game until time comes off the clock in high school or time comes off the clock or the situation changes because of a violation in college. So categories and examples, non-player. A player on the bench trips a player on the court. Okay, that is, that's a contact technical foul by a non-player. 
indirect to the coach because it's bench personnel. Two free throws for the offended team. Ball at the division line. Coach loses the coaching box. A non-contact. So these are one of the 10 players on the court. Taunting, clapping, unsporting words, inciting a fight, gestures towards an opponent or crowd. This technical goes directly to the player. That's important to note because two technical fouls directly to a player now goes towards disqualification. That non-player, if that non-player on the bench sticks out their foot, that doesn't go towards that direct technical foul to the player. All right? So we have to make sure we communicate that clearly. Two free throws, ball at the division line. If it's a second technical on that player, it's an ejection. Intentional slash flagrant technical foul. Punch, kick, spit during live ball. Flagrant player ejected. Two free throws for the offended team. Ball at the division line. So they don't get four since it's one act and it's considered flagrant or an intentional foul with ejection. Two free throws at the division line. Head coach on the court showing unsporting behavior towards officials or opponents. Integrity comments, unsporting gestures towards officials, the, you know, the wave off or throwing the, the, the jacket, throwing a chair onto the basketball court. That's directly given to the head coach. Two indirects, one direct, coach is ejected. Two directs to the head coach, coach is ejected. Team will get two free throws per technical foul. Ball at the division line. If it's only one technical foul, the coach loses their coaching box. And then bench personnel, assistants or players on the bench arguing with officials or making comments towards opponents. Indirect technical to the head coach. That coach stores at three indirects or two indirects and one direct. Two free throws to the offended team. Ball at the division line. Coach loses their box. The last big foul, flagrant. May be a personal or technical foul. The main thing here is violent or excessive of nature. Or it could be technical non-contact foul, which displays unacceptable conduct. Uh, so here are some examples, but it's not limited to. Striking, kicking, kneeing. So those are violent, excessive. These are the player is rearing back and then doing the striking, kicking, kneeing action. It's not a one-way thing. It is a gear up and come back the other way. Extreme or persistent, vulgar, or abusive conduct. This could be um, attacks on somebody's gender, attacks on somebody's age, attacks on somebody's religion, um, attacks on somebody's appearance. We cannot allow these excessive, violent, attacking, bullying words and actions in our game. Because if we don't, now we get to that last one, fighting, an attempt to strike, punch, or kick. So if I rear back with a closed fist and I come forward and I swing and miss, that is fighting. Contact is not needed uh, for a fighting flagrant foul. And then the last one is an attempt to instigate a fight. Uh, so we have an instigator. Coaches, we, we tell players all the time, if a player does something to you, do not respond to it. Walk away. Because if we do see that first person, we do hear that first person call somebody a, a very flagrant name, that's an attempt to incite a fight. We will eject flagrant remarks towards an opponent and now players who walked away they're penalized you're still able to play in the game if you do react with a fighting action we now have to eject both all right so players have that head held high and have that proud the pride the strength to walk away from those situations let the person who instigated it be the only person to be penalized for that action. Mechanics. This is an area I need to improve on. All right, so when making this training video, I, I remind myself of the technical foul situations I've been in this year. It's like, ugh, why did I not slow down and do exactly what I uh, teach and preach? 
So number one, get teams to their team area because we as officials have to get together as a crew. Well, we can't do that with opponents after a tough situation near each other. So blow the whistle, make the preliminary signal, get the players to their team area. Step two, crew get together. I'm the calling official. I'm giving my partners exactly what I have. Does anybody have anything additional? Does anybody have a different judgment? Is there more than one infraction? Once we share our perspectives, confirm the penalty. All right, White is going to get two free throws at the division line. This is the player's first technical foul. We're not going to have an ejection. Have a plan. All right, I, the calling official, I'm going to report it. You, as the non calling officials, you're going to go talk to the offended team to get the shooter. You're going to go talk to the team that is called for the technical foul because you have the best rapport with that coach and explain what the player did. Sweet, we have a plan. Let's break. Call an official, go report it. Partners talk to the coach. We shoot free throws with the calling official having the choice. This is part of the plan. By mechanic, we would like the calling officials to stay trail. They have their information. They have the judgment. But... If it's a head coach technical foul and I'm the one who gave the technical foul and that coach is still upset, don't put yourself in that situation. Go opposite. Because now if that coach keeps on escalating, they're escalating with a different official. If I stay near the coach and that coach deserves a second technical foul, two technical fouls given by the same official now seems perception personal. And perception is reality prevent that perception if you think people are going to perceive this situation as attacking personal or maybe you know you are upset have the courage to say i'm going to go to the opposite way my partners have all the information they could share all the information with the coach to de-escalate the situation mechanics close hand technical foul is a t Intentional foul is crossed arms above the head. All right. Tell the story. All right. Tell the story when reporting. And that doesn't have to be specifics. Taunting, striking, attempting, not legitimate play on the ball, excessive contact with the player. It's okay to tell that story again. And then resumption of spot. Is it going to be sideline, baseline, end line for the intentional foul? Or is it going to be division line for the technical foul? So here's some pictures. Contacting an official via headbutt. Flagrant. Contacting an official. Ejection. Gesture towards an opponent. Technical foul. All right. This is an unsporting gesture inciting the opponent to either react immediately or react later on in the game. If we ignore these behaviors... Players are going to retaliate. Nip it in the bud and call these gestures towards an opponent a technical foul. Flagrant. Coach throwing the chair onto the court. Coach slamming the the clipboard onto the court. Flagrant foul. Stepping in between players. If we need to step in between players, they're probably contacting each other, pushing, shoving, saying some nice words to each other. If there's one and one instigator only, get the instigator. If we have an instigator and we have equal or higher reaction, we have to get both players. Right? Players and coaches, again, have the wherewithal to walk away. We'll allow us officials to get the first act so we don't get that second act. Here are some videos of the big fouls that we're going to learn from. So the first one is intentional fouls. That's one more time, intentional foul, not a legitimate play. Intentional foul, not a legitimate play on the basketball. All right, intentional foul on white. We have to get in there. We can now have a technical foul taunting on number zero. Number zero is now inciting escalation. Get white team to their bench area, get the blue team to their area. This is a little bit tougher. All right, this was a, a recent game, but this is 
a head coach direct action technical foul. So here's the head coach right here. The head coach then comes onto the floor. And after he comes onto the floor, makes gestures and comments to the official. This is an automatic technical foul. This is not a bench decorum warning. This is egregious on the court, attacking verbally and gesturing towards the officiating crew. Technical foul on the head coach. High school, they lose their coach's box. Now we're going to take a look at flagrant, violent of nature. Leading with the elbow and striking the opponent, this is not an intentional foul. This is a violent foul. This is flagrant and ejection. We cannot allow that player to remain in the game after that action. Flagrant foul. So number two sees this screener, sees it coming, and premeditates and in intentionally does flagrant act onto the opponent. Correctly called, flagrant foul, and an ejection. Take a look at one more flagrant foul. Up, kick to the head. All right, flagrant foul when we kick an opponent in the head with our foot. All of those actions are excessive, violent of nature, and require an ejection. All right, so this is a good example of player technical fouls. And this was what we're talking about in the beginning. A lot of the situations that we have witnessed, things happen in a game that lead up to it. All right, so on this one, we have loss of verticality. The arms are forward prior to contact by number 33. Now we have the defender moving forward, contacting the shooter and a no call. When we have a no call on these types of plays, we, get, we got to start thinking retaliation. Retaliation number one is an intentional foul by red number 30. Does not make a play on the ball. We have an intentional foul on number 30. Now afterwards, now we have 33 who was going for the layup and there's a no call taunting the opponent. Now we have a technical foul dead ball. So intentional against red 30, technical foul against red 33. And be careful of our gestures. All right, so we have technical foul, gesture one. And then we have the other official making a gesture like this. If we deem that taunting flagrant because it was an, an attempt to incite a fight, it's good if we have this player ejected. But let's not make that ultimate decision until we get our crew together. So in this situation, altercation happened. Let's get these five players to their bench area, their team area. These five white players to their bench and team area. And also, it doesn't stop. Coaches can come onto the court to prevent a fight or assist in ending the fight. What they cannot do, though, is remain on the court arguing, yelling, screaming at the officials. All right, so we right now could have another technical foul now on the coach. Okay, I'm going to fast forward here to show a good example of the crew talking. Okay, this is what we want. After the altercation, each team is by their team area. We are sharing our information. And in this conversation, share your judgment and what you saw and piece it together. Once you piece it together, talk about the penalty. Don't leave this conversation too soon. If you leave this conversation too soon, we're going to misapply something and we're not going to have all the information to share with coaches. All right. We shared our story. We know the penalty. Calling official. You go to the reporting area and report. Two other officials go to your respective coach 
to explain what you were talking about in this huddle and then get the option from the offended team who is going to shoot. The intentional foul must be the player who attempted the shot. Then you're going to do the technical foul on number 33. It could be anybody from Team White for those two free throws. Then you'll do the technical foul for the coach. Anybody from that white team could shoot those two free throws. Since the technical foul happened after the intentional foul, we're going to inbound it at the division line. So a, a crazy play. Maybe all preventable if we called that first common foul. That is our training tape for, for this week. Again, officials understand the month of February, emotions are, are high. Many different reasons. End of the year, tired, post-holiday stress. Officials, you might be wearing down because of the amount of games. Take a deep breath. Understand we are going to have unsporting behavior. Two teams competing against each other, they want to win. Breathe. Have thick skin when unsporting behavior happens. Future training tapes. If you have clips we could use for training purposes, please send them in. If you have a question, a rules question we could use on our community page, please email PSOA at premiersportsofficials.com that rules question. And if you enjoy this material, you think others could benefit from it, a fan, a player, a coach, a partner, please share this website. Please have them subscribe, like it, and share it with others. The goal of this is to have all parties invested in the game. Spectators, fans, administrators, coaches, officials. Hearing the truth. Hearing the philosophies. And understanding why officials do what they do. And what players and coaches could do to not put officials in a place of judgment. Thank you for taking time out with PSOA. Until next time, officials. Remember, you're only as good as your last call. Thank you.